let's um talk about kind of offer creation then so for for so helping people craft a really successful offer is kind of the mechanism for delivering this transformation that you provide what would you say is like well like the most common mistakes that you kind of see people making hmm it's a really really good one um so i think common mistake definitely is that very often people don't realize that their offer is the problem. So they think that it's everything else. So how we started in this offer business, um, and maybe it's it's useful to talk about that mm. first, is yeah, that, I mean, we didn't set out to be offer coaches. We didn't say that, you know, one day we're like, hey, this looks like a good missive. This looks like a good business. Let's become offer coaches. It was something that was born out of us trying to solve what I thought was a different problem. Mm for my clients. So I, I started out, you know, I was running a marketing agency. That was um, one of the, the first iterations of the business of what it is today. And we were helping a lot of coaches and consultants to run their marketing because they were coming to us. They're like, yeah, well, you know, we've been working with different um, agencies and it's just not getting results. Um, and, you know, after talking to them, we, we, we said, okay, you know, let's help you to create like a full scale, like marketing engine that's tailor-made, it's for your audience, um, you know, all of the different steps and, and really keeping in mind that entire customer journey. But what we realized as we were going through that that journey of like running campaigns, designing and running campaigns is that we had to keep going back to the start, had to keep mm. going back to the start because people weren't clear mm. on what it was that they were selling and why customers should buy them. It's like if for an, from an engineering perspective, it's like having a faulty, like if you're, if you're building, I don't know, a skyscraper, it's like having a faulty foundation. Like it's, it's just going to fall down. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, like every every one of these clients that we started working with, they were convinced that they knew what their product was. They were convinced, you know, we know who our customer is. We know what they want. Um, this is the message and all of that stuff. And yes, you know, we can we we applied all of our marketing know how and um, you know the skill sets that I had gained that I had gained while I was um, doing all of that self education when I first jumped into business with you know uh, marketing and copy and, and story psychology and all of that stuff, especially with um, advertising, which was the, the the bulk of what we were focusing on in the beginning. And we were coming up with lots of hooks. We're coming up with hooks, angles, you know, well-structured copy, like call to actions, all of that stuff. But it was getting a bit of traction, but it just wasn't really what we wanted to see in terms of numbers we wanted to get. So we went back to the beginning. We went back to the beginning. Let's, you know, actually validate. It doesn't seem like your audience are responding to this. Let's go back to it. And that was actually where we really realized that this was such a gap. So you asked me, what's the biggest mistake that a lot of people um, are making when it comes to offers? I mean, I, I would say the biggest mistake is that most people, they don't realize it's even their offer in the first place. Most mm -hmm. people think that it's a problem with their messaging. They think it's a problem with their marketing. They think it's a problem with their positioning, with, you know, their LinkedIn profiles. Not These clear. are the clients That's that hire a new it. Google ads agency every year because it's, yeah. it's clearly the agency's fault. <laughs> <laughs> the magic solution is out there somewhere right yeah that that's it and and it's really really confusing for people because there are so many solutions out there and so much of it really i guess you know is is talking about the same thing and absolutely like yes once you once you have that clarity around what you're selling and who it's for and you know what the solution is and how that all connects to a market need mm. then yes absolutely like you know you need to work with that right um uh, you know, right agency or right partner to help you be able to start to scale that and put the marketing building blocks in place. But mm. without that initial clarity, like everything, everything sort of falls down. So I would say that that's definitely one of the biggest one. I think a different, um, another one, another big mistake that we see quite often um, is that, you know, people um, don't actually really want to do an offer because they think that it limits them in some way. So I think there's a, a lot of fear when people jump into business. And, and I have to say a lot of this comes from baggage that we carry with us back in the corporate days. It's like being a generalist, the, the recovering generalist thing that you were talking about before. It used to be a strength. It used to be a skill set. It was something that made us useful in an organization's um, context. And in a business space, it's sometimes scary to say, you know what, I can do all these things, but I'm not, I'm going to do this. I'm only going to do this and get known for this. And I think a lot of people are afraid that by, 
you know, limiting themselves in some way when they think about offers. It's like, oh, that means I need to cut off all the other things that I can actually do that it somehow is going to take something away from them, you know, whether it's it's opportunity, so fear of losing the opportunity or fear of, you know, being limited in terms of the type of um, potential that they can, uh, they, can, they can create for themselves. Mm. Just thinking in, in terms of my work, there's a lot of work that I still do that but I've relegated to it's an experiential thing where people find when they actually work with Rob that I am under the surface, I am still a generalist and for the right clients, I'm sometimes the best placed person to to do some of this stuff. Um, although not, you know, I'm not trying to be the outsourced marketing department anymore, but um, but it's re- it's relegated to the background and I'm trying to keep it out of the frontline offer a bit more. Hmm. Yeah, no, I I think it's um I think it's a smart move. I mean, I definitely wouldn't have picked you as a generalist at all. And having known you for um, you know, for, for a while and uh, I also follow your content and um, the things that you post on LinkedIn and 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 just your, your podcast. Obviously, I've been listening to that and really really enjoying it. By the way, mm, um, and yeah, I, I I wouldn't have picked you as a a generalist at all. All right, good. So I I do a good job of hiding it then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, I wanted to, to ask you about you put a post on LinkedIn about the trigger and that caught my attention. So it caught my attention because it prompted a memory. So one of my favorite marketing books is Sean D'Souza's book, The Brain Audit. And he talks about the trigger being the point at which you kind of pair together the problem and the and the solution to get someone's attention at that moment. Mm-hmm. And I wondered how that, I wondered if you could talk about that and how that relates, how, how, how you would frame the trigger. Yeah, I love that. Um, I actually have been reading this book since you recommended it to me and oh my gosh so it's such a brilliant recommendation so, so thank you so much firstly for it, it's great as well because it's it's a it's a beautiful book to read because it because he's a cartoonist so ah, it's, got, it's got the aesthetic it value a lot. As well. yeah it explains a lot because a lot of the examples that he gives they're very simple examples but they mm. almost create like sort of visual very simplified cartoon images in your head as he's talking through it. Mm. But um, yeah, no, that, that actually explains a lot. I, I, I'm definitely going to check him out a little bit more. Um, but yeah, going back to your question about the trigger and just like framing around that, because I, I, I do really enjoy also how he talks about that as well. And I was just thinking about that even this morning as I was walking, because one of the examples that he talks about is this lemonade stand examples. Mm. He talks about, you know, um, young kids that, uh, open lemonade stand and it's a hot day and how do they make sure that um, this lemonade stand is actually going to get the attention that they want and yes if you are just happen to be in you know where I live which is like you know this not that it's eyes are worth so it's like very very sort of empty um, and there's only one lemonade stand on the side of the road and you know you're um, it's a it's hot day then probably you're going to get all the customers but what if there's like multiple, like it's like an entire street of lemonade stands, like how are you actually going to stand out? And it's really, really interesting because he talks about it in that, you know, you want to make sure that um, I think he said like uh, germ, germ free lemonade or something like that. It, it mm. just it's, it's going obviously after the germaphobes, that something which is very specific and calling out the person. It calls out the problem as well. But it- calls out the problem. Exactly. But then I was thinking, OK, but here's the problem, right? Because everyone is saying that they're different now. Mm. You know, that that's actually the biggest problem at the moment on LinkedIn, social media, you know, all those different platforms, like all the businesses, every business feels like they're unique. Every mm. business, every, every business is unique, but they're all saying the same thing. You know, they're all saying like, you know, we're different. We're all about doing things differently. And, you know, this is the unique thing that we do and all of that stuff. So, Here's the challenge. Like, what if every single one of those lemonade stands all had their unique thing? Like, mm. what would be the thing then that actually makes it different? And I think, you know, coming back to the trigger, a lot of it again, you know, it has to do with getting specific. Like, you have to be specific in that clarity and that directness, in firstly knowing what that trigger is, but also um, I would actually add an additional layer to it. And this is one of the things that we talk about a lot in the work that we do with clients, which is knowing where you're actually meeting your clients on a sort of an awareness spectrum. Mm. And every single person that you speak to, they're going to have different trigger points. Mm. And those trigger points, they they sit across a spectrum of awareness. 
So you have at, you know, on one end of the spectrum, you have the people that are the most aware. They're the people that, you know, have extensively researched um, lemonade stands and they have extensively researched the best place to go for lemonade. Um, and they know exactly the store that they need to go to in order to get the quality that they want. Mm-hmm. And Eugene Schwartz's levels of awareness, wasn't it, from breakthrough exactly. advertising? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Exactly. And then you've got at the other end of the spectrum, just people that are completely even unaware that they have a problem in the first yeah. place. They're bleeding and they don't even know it. That's it. Mm. So I think when it comes to the trigger, it's a tricky one because I think the mistake that a lot of experts make is that they're only aware of the trigger, which is at a point that people are ready to hear the solution. Mm. And that's just, you know, it's great. It's great to identify the trigger at that point. But the problem is about, you know, 80 to 90 percent. Of your There's only so many of those people, and it's a very competitive market for their very attention. Very That's expensive, it. very competitive. That's it. So I think it it kind of creates a different layer to understanding the trigger because you almost sort of need to be aware of the mind, um, the mindset that people are and the thoughts that are running through their mind. And what is that trigger that's going to get them to sort of wake up and realize that, you know oh, okay, there's something that I need to dig into further here. And maybe at, you know, that other end of the spectrum, the the completely unaware, they're not going to be ready yet for a solution and that's okay. But you have to still know what's going to be the trigger for them to get to that next level of awareness so that they can continue to move along the Mm. different trigger journey until they get to that point that they know, you know what, I need this solution and I need it now. Mm. Yeah, that's great because I think otherwise, like the, whatever offer you present, it's gonna it's going to pass like a ship in the night, as David o- Ogilvy might have said. Yeah, that's it. In terms of structuring the offer, then are you helping people to craft like more of a kind of standard offering, or is it generally more like a bespoke kind of solutions driven where it depends on the clients? Yeah, I, w- I would say the way that the offering gets packaged together, it's almost like it's it's basically the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole lot of stuff that you have to uncover, um, you know, before that. And yes, you know, we do help people with packaging things. A lot of people, they come to us and they're a place that, where they're, they, they have a lot of pre-thought. They have a lot of stuff that has been it's either in the head or it's somewhere on paper or it's like bits and pieces of different things that they've, you know, scribbled in their notes, like all over the place, but it's not actually put together. And, and yes, absolutely. There's, there's like structures to, you know, help to put all of that together. But I would say the biggest hurdle is in really just even understanding the components that would make up that offer. Mm-hmm. And that's actually the biggest question to answer. Like when you, when you understand those components, it's literally a matter of, putting it together like a jigsaw puzzle, you know, you just slot those things into the offer. And and yes, there's a little bit of like packaging it up and all of that stuff. But Mm. unless you know those big blocks and you're fundamentally able to answer those really basic questions that sometimes I ask, you know, really established businesses and they can't answer it, you know, what is it exactly that you sell and why do customers buy you? And unless those big questions are actually, you know, clear, it's, um, it's, it's going to be very difficult to put together an offer that and make it sound compelling it's just because it hasn't actually been connected yet to a market need. So I would say um, a big part around, you know, getting that offer right is less so around the structure of it, just like, you know, putting it together, it's not formulaic. creating a sales mm. page or it's creating a brochure or, you know, even just a, um, a letter that you can send out to your prospects. But it's actually... Yeah, it's it's actually that initial sort of creating the hypothesis around what this offer may be, getting it tested, getting it validated, seeing is it actually, you know, are you hitting on something that the market really wants? Like, is it a hot market? Mm. And then only, only then actually looking at how do we package this in a way that's going to be the most attractive and make sure that the best message comes out the forefront. I'm definitely in the club of having created things that the market doesn't actually want, even though it was a great idea and they could have really benefited from it, but they they, they didn't know that or think that. 
So yeah, I, I think I think every business owner has been there, and the ones that say that they haven't are probably just you know not really wanting to or maybe feeling feeling bad about some of these failures but yeah absolutely i mean i i, I sent out a an email just it's the fact of being that. an innovator in creating products is that we know the products much better than the audience does and that's just a fact of life and we that's it that. that's it we, we are so much in that solution mindset that we miss the fact that we actually need to take our clients along on that journey like you know we know the solution we know their problem but I think a lot of the times we're in conversations, we miss the fact that they need to first recognize that they're having a problem and mm. almost do that solution solving mm. thing in their own heads and come along on that journey before they're ready to buy. But yeah, I mean, you know, this, this failure thing, I mean, a lot of what we're teaching now, it comes from our own grounded experience of having had offers that flopped, you know, mm. things that we put out into the market and nobody bought. Mm. You Could, know? At the risk of putting you on the spot, would you talk through an example either of one of your own products or maybe one you've worked on with the clients? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, I'm happy to give an example just from our own experience. So um, we uh, this was this was very early on in our um, business journey. At that point, I was still a one woman band, and we launched um, a course and. Um, uh, and and basically the idea was that I wanted to create a branding course, you know, putting together all of the different knowledge around like different areas. And I tested it a little bit. So I had like at that point, you know, just um, uh, worked with a few people that, you know, were already in my network and I knew that they wanted to work with me. And they uh, decided to say yes, to join my branding course. And, you know, we uh, ran this course a couple of times with, um, a cohort of, well, three cohorts in total was probably about 15 to 20 people. And I thought, well, okay, so I've sold it a couple of times. So that definitely means that I must have a great offer and I'm ready to scale this mm -hmm. and start selling this mm -hmm. to the masses. And simple. yeah, so so what, what happened was that I decided like, okay, I've been delivering this course live for the last few months. So now we're going to create a course that is just going to be standalone and something that will be a passive product that is going to generate money um, passively while we focus on other things. And so off we went uh, in the back, sort of like tinkering and building this product. Um, and I say we, because, you know, at that point I had started um, uh, building a team. So I hired my first team members and we spent two months basically not doing any business development, just like literally stopped sales dead. Mm -hmm. And because we wanted to focus all the energy on building this fantastic product that was going to you know, basically um, get our business to take off. So two months of time, just like building this product, creating the perfect marketing campaign, you know, pulling out all the stops in terms of like a content plan. There was like advertising, um, there were like taglines, there were sales pages and, you know, different link backs and all of that stuff. And everything was just like perfectly orchestrated and we launched it and crickets, literally crickets. Nobody bought a thing. <laughs> and, the, and the world yawned in your face. Yes, yes, pretty much, pretty much. So so that was a very, I would say, very expensive and uh, heavy lesson learned. Mm -hmm. And luckily at the time, you know, we um, we had other pillars in our, our business. So we still had a little bit of consulting work that was going. So it was able to get us through that, that period. But we literally had to, you know, start from scratch and just start going back to the drawing board again. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, one mm -hmm. of the reasons that I am so passionate about this is because we have been through that burn. And I'm so thankful that we learned those lessons so early on in our journey. At that point, you know, Christina was just starting to, um, you know, come in and she was obviously doing a lot of observation on the side. She wasn't yet fully involved in the business. So she still had enough of that distance to be able to give me perspectives and the things that she was able to see. And yeah, I mean, we, you know, made a lot of, um, uh, you know, changes in terms of direction on what we were doing in our business and we were able to get things back on track you know once we we're able to get that focus but yeah I mean it isn't something that we've just heard from people like you need to find the right focus you need to do the validation you need to do the testing all of that stuff it's literally coming from the fact that you know we we've been burnt and literally mm. just wasted like thousands of pounds of advertising on marketing that didn't work mm. Is there scope for kind of adopting almost like an agile approach to use a software analogy where you kind of develop a smaller iteration of it and then get feedback on it sooner? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. So that's um, what we call the beta process. Mm. But the beta process also isn't enough. 
because like I told you in the beginning, um, I had sold the program to yeah. what I thought was already a small version mm. of that, what I thought was already passing the beta process, but I hadn't it made it. could still have a faulty foundation and have a successful beta. That's it. That's it. Mm. I hadn't made the leap. I hadn't actually cracked how to go from selling to somebody I know to selling to, you know, Brand somebody people. who, do, who mm. do, has never actually heard of me, who I don't have any credibility, no relationship with. And that's a really, really big leap. Uh, that, sorry. That's a really, really big leap that I think a lot of business owners, they, um, they've struggled to, to do. And, and that's why they, they fail in their marketing. Mm. Mm. Is there perhaps one more tip we can give people before we before we sign off? One one, one big one, you know, for someone listening, if there's one one thing that they should it, perhaps even not know, perhaps I mean that if they're crafting an offer, one thing they should perhaps think about. Yeah, I think. Um, gosh, there's so many there's so many tips that I can I can give about this. I would say um, if there's really one tip that I can give is if you are in that place at the moment where you're you're struggling in terms of just um you know figuring out why is it that this offer just isn't taking off or maybe you're in a place that you're just even figuring out what that offer is i would say you know go back to the last um the last few projects that you've worked on and just you know if you had had the opportunity where you actually recorded some of the conversations that you either had with clients um like go back and have a listen to those and really ask yourself a few questions around, you know, what was it about this? Like, firstly, did I enjoy this? So is it something that gave me joy? And, you know, is it something that I see myself doing more of? And then if that is the case with, and you're really enjoying the person that you're actually working with, go back to that and really sort of like go back, re-listen, you know, listen to what, try to listen to what were the things that they were actually struggling with. Sometimes we're so much in our solution mindset that we're missing the real problems and the real trigger points that they're telling us. And yeah, you know, just go back and listen and see what sort of insights that you're able to, to pull out of that. How do people connect with you? How do people find out more about your work? LinkedIn is probably the best place at this moment. We are on other social media platforms. So we, we do have Instagram and, and um, others, but at the moment, LinkedIn is probably still going to be the best place. We're actually um, also running uh, an event. I don't know if that's still going to be relevant at the time that this is this podcast is going to be published, but we do run uh, events quite regularly, mm -hmm. um, all about you know helping people with their offers and you know sharing a lot of the, the techniques that we work on behind the scenes with our clients. So yeah, LinkedIn is going to be the best place and, and where you can also find out more information about these events. Right. I'll put that in the show notes. Uh, do you have a, have a website that people can, can go to as well? We do. We do. Yes. What's the domain? Uh, www.growyourbrandwithimpact.com. Perfect. Grace, well, thanks for coming on, Angela. I've, I've uh, really enjoyed that conversation. And people should follow you oh, on likewise. LinkedIn and, and pay attention to your stories because I, th I think you're doing a, a great job of it. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Rob. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Take care. Bye.